the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. I hope you enjoy uh, your weekend uh, your, and last week, and I hope you have a blessed week coming up. And uh, this Sunday, we just did uh, the 23rd of July. We sat there and, and went over uh, the true mark of a Christian. But the title started off, because I ended up with two titles. And I want to show the two titles, and I want to read the scripture that we use, because the fact is we as believers need to start operating as believers and stop operating according to the world and understand that we are all accountable to God. And if you don't think that, then, then, then that's, you understand that stop calling yourself a Christian if you don't want to be accountable to God. A lot of cases we seem to be accountable to man, but we got to be accountable to God. Amen? So, this is the, this is a topic that uh, I felt I needed to address this morning, uh, but <laughs> the whole point is we need to understand the true mark of a Christian. But my title, then I go with this title. But the second title I want to show you, the scripture I'm going to go over with, uh, is "Do Christians believe we benefit from slavery?" That's a question. Do you? Because in Florida, they they want to put and say there was some benefit from being a slave. There was some benefit from being raped. There was some benefit from being uh, tortured and mutilated and hung and forced to lay, uh, to, to work in in cotton fields and 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 cake and you know other agricultural uh, things as if these people came from civilizations that didn't have those things, don't have those skills. But if, you, if you're that ignorant, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell you something. The earliest and first civilization started where? In Africa. <laughs> that's not an indoctrination, that's a truth. And the fact is that those people came from, those people who were kidnapped, came from uh, cultures and civilizations that were surviving and striving as a governments and as, as people, as communities. They, they didn't come out there sitting there hanging on a, a, just in a hut or just spear, throwing a spear. These people came. And don't forget, too, if you don't know history, the Moors ruled Europe for over seven, eight hundred years. Maybe you didn't know that, but you know it now. If you're going to listen. So we got to say, no, there's no benefit from being a slave. You think so? You be one and see if you like it. So I started with that. But this is what the whole point I really wanted to get to is this right here, the mark of a true Christian. And I want to cover those scriptures. And like I said, I hope you enjoy this uh, study we're going to do. I'll break them down in segments. But the fact is that we have to go by the teaching of Christ. We need to show and bear good fruit. Fruits of the Spirit found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there's no law. We need to bear good fruit. And then we need to also show the mark of a true Christian. And that's what this one is about, is showing the true marks of a Christian. And don't forget, Christ said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Obviously, if some people saying they love somebody else because they're not loving Christ, but they're not keeping his commandments. So here's the, the script I wanted to use that we're going to use by study. And those scriptures come at the end of the study. But look at what it says here. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patience in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints, giving the hospitality, bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide, on, provide things honest in the sight of all men. 
if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peacefully with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore the enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, he shall heap coals of fire in his hand. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's the whole point we're saying is the mark of a Christian. And I like to read that again. Be not overcome with evil, overcome evil with good. Listen, we need to be and bear the mark of a Christian. These are the answers to the test if you want to be a Christian. You make that confession and you bear good fruit because it's time for us to shine. And I'm saying is that's not some of the stuff we're saying in the day, it's not about shining, it's about lying. And we need to not tolerate that anymore. It's time to start making the deal with the devil and start making the deal with God through the new covenant, through Christ. Amen? And like I said, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoy and I'll see you when I see you. And now we're getting ready to go to the next session or the concerning the study we did this week on the 23rd of July. God bless you and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. He taught this. So you need to do this. Amen? Look at 1 Timothy 2, 4. He said, who will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth? And 14, 12 people, 14, 12 says, so that every one of us should give an account of himself to God. I just want you to know that as whoever's teaching you, encouraging you to do wrong things, just remember this. They will give an account to God. You will give an account of yourself to God. Every man and woman and children will give an account of themselves to God. That's why we need salvation. <laughs> That's why we need the blood of Christ. That's why we need him to be our advocate. But that's why we need to repent. Operate on the grace of God. But if you don't give grace, it, what, what I'm trying to say, if you operate in bad, evil behavior toward people, if you do things to people that cause them to get, be paid, to cause them to be tormented, to cause them to be ostracized, discriminated, anything else, and you given that, then you're, not, you're gonna have to give an account to that. And and maybe the, those who don't believe and don't think you have to go before God, because many of you are comfortable going before man. Many of you are trying to get approval of man for bad behavior, as if they are the ones that's gonna advocate for you. And if you don't have Christ, you're not going to have him. He's not going to advocate for you. He's going to sit there and say, I never knew you. So what benefit or profit of man, right? To gain the whole world, yet lose his soul. Because you deceive yourselves. You know, Nehemiah, the one I got right there beside it, says, Nehemiah, so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. We want to make sure you get an understanding of the reading of the word of God. Hey, Brother Addison, how's it going, brother? I'm, I'm already stirred up on Sunday. I got two sessions that I want to try to do, but I, I'll if I get to that, but don't worry about that. But for you, Brother Addison just came in. I'm going to just go ahead and let him know the topic and I'm going to stir them up. Sorry, Brother Addison. I'm going to make you upset today. That's that's just how it goes sometimes in life. But I think you, you'll you be all right with it. You can deal with it because it gives you a chance to use the scriptures, as far as I'm concerned, to show people that, man, you, you, you don't. it's time to stop playing with fire. It's time to stop playing with fire. So look at this. Uh, because of what came out on the news this week from the Florida uh, which is probably not the only person on the other nation, other countries, excuse me, other states, also trying to ban or rewrite history. Florida, I mean, Texas is trying to rewrite history as well. The question I have though, if for believers, that's who we're counted as part of, and that's who we advocate to be. 
Then we ask that question, do Christians believe we benefited from slavery? You know, I mean, you, you saw that, that's the, the guidelines that Florida has given. I think you heard that. Uh, did you did you hear that? Something to that. In the news? Yeah, yeah. In other words, that's what uh, the vice president went down and, and to Florida and, and talked about that. Said the insulting, is so in, insulting for somebody to sit there and try to rewrite history, try to cover up what happened, the atrocities. Cause this, there's bad things that we have in the history. You know, I I said it last week, or I said it before, you know, in Galatians 6, it says, be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that should also reap. To sit there, and I'm, I start off saying is that we, if people don't understand, if you don't watch out, you, may create a harvest for the wrath of God. And and, and we got a history. The, 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 I guess the only balance thing is a lot of other countries have a history as well, you know? So so really is the question of whether the wrath of God, well, Revelation, we said that, right? That's gonna happen in Revelation, isn't it? The wrath of God is coming. And the question is for some of the people, they, they, they don't understand. It's coming because it reached the point where God is saying, it's time to pay. It's time to pay. And, and, and believers who want to be raptured and caught up is to make sure that they don't get involved with the, the stuff. You know, Christ said in John 14, uh, 15, if you love me, you keep my commandments. If we call ourselves Christians, we got to go by the teaching of Christ. So, so my focus on the first segment of this, and what I do is if I just may cover this first segment and then get with you on the second, uh, or myself, after you know, I'll let you go. Uh, I do what I just talked to. I just wanted to slide dealing with the Lord's prayer. So the fact is that God is Christ is teaching us that pray in this manner, and this manner also allows us to remind ourselves to do His will. Not our will, but his will be done. And a lot of people too good to try to do the will of other people, trying to impress other people. And I, I put there the fact is that God's in 1 Timothy 2 4, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And then Romans 14 12 is what people understand is so then every one of us shall give an account of himself unto God. That's the critical piece that parents should be teaching. People should be teaching each other. Men should be teaching one another. You give an account. You can lie all you want, you can play your politics, you can play your games all you want, but in the end, every last one of us will give an account to God. So that's the foundation starting off with. I put down here, is the fact is in Romans 10, nine and 10, is the fact is if you call yourself a Christian, that's, that's what's critical. Then if he's Lord, then you shouldn't be doing things contrary to his teaching. Is that a fair assumption to say? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a fair assumption to say because that's what the scripture says. He says that if thou confess, those are people who sit there and want to put on this, be wolves and sheep clothing. You need to understand for us as believers, it's not about what you put on on the outside or what you try to reveal to others on the outside. It's on the inside that matters. And God is the one that looks on the inside. But if you're confessing that he's Lord, that means if thou confess that mouth of the Lord Jesus, that means that you come off the throne. Politics is coming off the throne. Color of skin is coming off the throne you're coming off the throne and you're saying that Christ is your Lord, your Savior, being led by the Holy Spirit. He said, if thou confess in the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, there you go again, that's what that scripture said, in the heart, in your inward side, in your spirit, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, 
<laughs> what's coming out of your mouth. The scripture even said death and life are the power of the tongue. If you believe and you confess with your mouth is made in salvation. What's coming out of your mouth? Spewing hate, spewing anger and lying to people. Come on. The other one I like to put in there and I remind people, this is for people. This is even for Brother Addison, but it's for him and me as well. But for those who listen or will listen or pass it on to somebody who needs to hear this, it says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven. But he, which we reflect right back to the Lord's prayer, but he who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in that day? And in that name cast out devils, and that name done many wonderful works. Then, and then I will confess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Depart, I'm sitting there saying this. If he don't know you, he can't advocate for you. Woo, come on now. Yeah, that, 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 that's, a, that's, a, that's a clear statement, people. You, 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 you're not going to get an advocate that don't know you. He said, Lord, I, I don't know this. I, hey, let the devil go ahead and speak for you. Because I don't know you. Let the accuser of the brethren speak on you, have your behalf because he's going to accuse you of what you are. The day of judgment. And, and let me understand this. And brother, I think you agree with this. is Hebrews. I think it's in uh, 9, verse 12. It says, there's a point in time for every man to die then judgment. <clears throat> for many of you need to understand your judgment begins after you die. There's going to be a judgment where those who didn't die in the wrath of God in the book of Revelation. But for all of us who will live long enough and then die, pass away, body expired, you will now face the judgment of God. Now you will give an account of yourself unto God. If you are in Christ, then your advocate will give an account of you. But if you are not a, what he will say, I knew you. If he don't know you, he's not going to advocate for you. He's not going to give you the grace. He's not going to give you the mercy. He's not going to give you the blood. The, that, at, if you don't have that when you go before God you are naked <laughs> before God he doesn't see his son he doesn't see the sacrifice of his son he sees you and I'm not I, <laughs> I, need, I need the advocate and I think many of us need the advocate if we are believers in Christ now, for those of people who don't want to believe in Christ, then you will go before him on your own. Do do you and then you hey, you know, I think this I think in the modern day, they say it's a fool to go try to represent himself in court. Uh, <laughs> so if you want to try to go before God, uh, go ahead with your bad self. That's that that day will work. All right. Now, now we're gonna talk about the benefits. I could I your question is saying how did how do we be, benefit? I guess I better let you talk a little bit before we get into the sick things that God hates. Uh what what benefit uh do you know in slavery? Can you you know you you said he Brother Adams was a Christian. He professed to be a Christian. He made the confession to be a Christian. So he can speak as a Christian. What benefits were there in slavery? I can't fathom anything either. I had a friend of mine one time sit there and try to say, well, you know, the, the blessing that you have is being in this country instead of being in Africa now, you know. Uh, and the guy was the guy was sincere about it too. He, he was sincere about it, but he forgot about the fact is that your type of people exploited Africa. Your type of people uh, did 
attack and destroy the civilization of Africa and took over it and carved it up like 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 a, like, like an animal and did all kinds of things in that country. And then you go sit there and say, see, aren't you aren't you glad that you came here? You know, you came here by via the boat, via the being on the bottom of the ship being chained and spit on and died, you know, defecated on and, and probably barely made it out of there, right? But 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 that was a benefit because see you you left that country and see if you, you had to left that country that we devastated it to the best of our ability. We explored it to the best of our ability. Not only did we take people from that country, we did bad things to that country. And then you're gonna sit there and say, see you, that was a benefit for you. To, you, you see what I'm saying? That's that's what that joke was saying to me. He was saying, he was like, does that make sense? It, it, it's like, it's, it, 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 but you know, it could make sense to them because they could be engulfed into the propaganda that's uh, surrounding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Africa, because yeah. you know, still, the I believe the majority of people, especially in this country, yeah, think that Africa is uh, what you saw when you saw Tarzan. The movie. Oh, look, or, or National Geographic. How is yeah, that? You know, it's, it's just wilderness with people <laughs> living. You know, uh, in the jungle, and wearing you know grass skirts and 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 whatever. Yeah, no, look, look, the ladies, the breast not the covered yeah, up. You, you know, know. But, but okay, let's just say, you know, let's remove Tarzan, who was a fictional character. <laughs> yeah. You know, because ain't no apes gonna <laughs> raise come on now. No human. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> let's just remove that. So you have a, a, a people who are existing. Mm -hmm. And whether you show up or not, they had been existing. Yeah. And they were existing. They were you know, existing. They, and they, had you got there, they were existing without exactly. any help or aid. Mm hmm of Europeans. Yes, sir. Okay, and, and, you know, since the beginning of time, they existed. And they, 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 they flourished. Mm -hmm. And they had civilization, old civilization. Civilization was found there. <laughs> yeah. So when you really look <clears throat> at what, what, <laughs> what is there, yeah. And you really invest uh, some time in, in looking at the cities mm. The, mm. That, that are grander than most of the major cities that are here in the United States. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and some, you can't tell the difference. Yeah. And so, and, and the fact that their modern technology and everything, it, it, it's no different than what's here. And that's without Europeans, you know. Yeah, help. help. That's the issue, right? Yeah. yeah. So, In other words, you, you, you destroy go, something, then you go, then you go, yeah. you destroy it, then you go sit there and say, look, they all jack up. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so to say that, to take somebody who is existing on their own, Doing well, had families, farms, you know, uh, cattle. Yeah, the infrastructure, yes, sir. Cities, you know, uh, uh, businesses, mm -hmm. you know, um, <clears throat> careers. Come on. You take these people and you, 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 you bind them mm. and you treat them as an animal. Mm. And then you say they're better off here. <laughs> than where they were. So Woo. that's like saying that an animal 
is better off in captivity than loose. Hey, hey everybody, God bless you. I, I, once again, I still be excited about getting to the Word of God, studying the Word of God, and discussing the Word of God with other people. And this Sunday is no different than for the rest of this week. Uh, we send out small segments, uh, these uh, sessions, so you can digest them. Uh, but I'm telling you, the the topic today, I had a bit of two topics, uh, because you got to be led by the Holy Spirit on what He wants to talk about, and 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 try to make sure people understand who we are, who you are, if you believe that you are a believer in Christ, if you are in Christ, be Lord, because it's not just confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus, but believing in your heart that God raised from the dead and as we say. But the key to that is that you believe with your heart and you, you, you confess salvation to your mouth. But the key word I want to put in there is that you're letting him be Lord in your life. If you follow in Christ, Christ said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. So the question is, is some of the behavior that we do, are we doing that to, to please the Father or are we doing things to please man? Do we believe we're going to only be accountable to man in this lifetime or do we understand we'll be accountable to God? That's what I want to be able to talk about. And when, when, when I came up with the study, I had the initial topic is the mark of a true Christian. And, and I felt led and also inspired because of the news from this week where the state of Florida then says that, you know, uh, slave benefit from being slaves. And you know, good weather, that, that's just a slap in the face to anybody to just think that you, you benefit from being a slave. Uh, could I ask you a question? Who, anybody, anybody who was not, were not slaves, anybody who were, came to this country as free people or indentured people, but the fact is you came to this country and did you want to be a slave? Do you think that you would have been, you have been beneficial for you to be a slave opposed to being free? And the answer is going to always be being free. So it isn't the type of, I get in I'm going to, this is my opening piece I want to give and, and, and close out. I had two topics. The first one was, do Christians, and you know, because I'm a Christian, so I'm talking about as Christians, do Christians believe we benefited from slavery? And the answer should be no. And if you do believe that, then you need to go and t come up on the line and tell people why you felt that you should have been a slave so you can get benefit. So instead of sitting there trying to say that somebody else benefited from rape, benefited from murder and lynching and the brutality and forced to, to not pursue happiness, but to be forced to work for somebody else forever, or at least until they died. You know, that's that's the conditions of slavery. And and something about Florida, they forgot the fact is that those people that actually uh, are anti-abortion, don't, don't forget that some of the people in Florida or in some of the other states, I guess, as well, use baby slaves to capture alligators. Meaning they put the baby out in the, in, in the reach where the alligator and come be a child. That's, that's, that's demonic, don't you agree? But the bottom line I put down here is that do Christians believe we benefit from slavery? No. We don't think we benefited from the brutalities of slavery. And if you think so, why don't you go ahead and be a slave for yourself? You know, the bottom line is we are believers. And Christ had then said in John 15, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You know his commandments, right? John 14, 30, what, 13, uh, 35, or 34, where it says is a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I love you, that you also love one another. And then 35 says, and men will know you're my disciple for the love you have for one another. So uh, obviously, uh, people in slavery that became Christians, they still had the same type of mentalities and everything else, really bringing up this modern day time. And yet, they did it by, to, from people who profess to be Christians. Uh, now, the benefit is something from God, not from man. And if I go by the man's benefit, I don't want it. 
not that way, anyway. The other one I put down here is the mark of a true Christian. And, and, and as we close out, the fact is, man, um, are some people not recognizing, and I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of them, they don't really are accountable to God. They don't believe they are, but everybody will. The Bible said, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Christ is Lord. Um, everywhere will be go before God and give account of himself to God. You know, that's why we want to advocate Christ. So you take it for what you want. But obviously in this world, come on, in this world, some people feel that they are not going to be held accountable. And maybe that's why they do what they do. They can't see what they see or do. Amen. So God bless you. Hope you enjoy yourself. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to put in my introduction in. I may do a uh, close out as well, but don't forget to subscribe, leave comments, and uh, I appreciate your support and listening. Man, God bless you, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.